Yes, everybody, Russ on the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well, my friends. Let me bring in my learned my learned partner, Mr. Anton Baker. How are we doing? Are you enjoying your weekend without having to think about West Ham? <laughs> it's a weird one, isn't it? It's weird, isn't it? How do we ever not really think about West Ham, though? Yeah, I know, but it's like, it's, it's, okay, all right, let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. Isn't it nice that you had the weekend and West Ham haven't lost to ruin all the <laughs> Yes, that is that's that's better. Good. That's the better way of doing it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's that's true. Yeah, you don't have that kind of up or down feeling. Um yeah. Actually, I've been feeling quite good about West Ham recently because the kids are totally obsessing over I'm forever blowing bubbles. And every two seconds are asking uh, Alexa to play it. And it's literally every two seconds. It's literally that's, two seconds. That's but brilliant. I, I didn't re I, I did realise that in the song that it's got the wow 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 like the the the, 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 the I don't know the electronic sound. Yeah. And it's really like jazzy. And I, I and I think I did know it was there. But yeah yeah yeah. Like I'm, I'm and I've been listening. To, honestly, I'm jo not joking you. It's it's like repeated, and I'm never bored of it. And each time it comes on, I get little tingles. Mate. And it just transports me back to being a kid. Welcome and, and, to my and, world, literally. Yeah, I, I, know, I think I, I reckon I played that song. Right, okay, 22, say 22 years, say 20 games on average. 22, 20 games on average, maybe even more. Say 25, because there'll be friendlies yeah. and cups. 22 times 25, we play it. Uh, right, okay, controversially, we haven't played it twice. We do play it twice sometimes. Uh, so we play two. Uh, divide. So, so, so if you play it twice, that's 11. That's I've played it 1,100 times. And Plus, we need to win. And do, yeah, so I reckon yeah. <laughs> last time, last game at Bowling, I must have played it five times anyway. So I reckon we play, I reckon I've played that nearly two and a half thousand times. Well, I reckon ish. we've played it two and a half thousand times today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. The two of them, I've got three kids, obviously one one of them can't speak, but the two are literally like, I like to play every bubble bubbles. And then sometimes it comes oh. up with like random people's versions of it. And there's a couple of really funky ones. Um, or oh, who was the one that came up to you? I can't even remember. Uh, oh, it was just quality. It was like funky. It was like New Yorkie. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Well, like, well if, you, if, you, if you watch Bullet Train, Oh, a bit. Oh man, don't get me started on that film. How many references to West Ham in it? Yeah, I mean, because he plays references? bubbles. But he plays bubbles every time he shoot. You kill someone, isn't it, that bloke? It's unbelievable, it's brilliant, isn't it? I saw it on the flight to Orlando. I don't know if I've mentioned, but I went to went to Orlando for two and a half weeks. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but um. But yeah, no, I, I hadn't watched it, and I thought, oh, actually, I'm on my own because we had like two and I and me on my own. I thought I'm going to watch this. Flo's been sick. Like for nine hours, but doesn't matter. I'm watching this movie, and it was like, do you know what? This is a mate. It was it was a phenomenal movie. Yeah, great, it's a great film movie. movie. But the fact that it's referenced West Ham so many yeah. times in it sucks. I'm sorry, but I don't want to spoil it for you people who are watching it. <laughs> a, a very quick story because I know we're here for a reason. But um, my brother, we we, we we don't we would never share Prime anyway. Um, yeah. My brother rented the movie in preparation to watch it on the Saturday night with his family. And on the Friday night, I sat down with the missus and we watched it, but never realised that it was rented. You paid for it. <laughs> or, or the Thursday night, we watched it because it's you get 24 hours or 40 hours to watch it. And so in the family chat message, I was like, oh my God, have any of you watched this movie? It's got about a million references to West Ham. And my brother went, where are you watching it? And I went, Prime. And he went, yeah, I bought that to rent. And once you start watching it, it's gone within 40 hours. So I used his. I was like, "Cheers, bro! Thanks." For yeah, you, watch you, it. you, you better hurry up. Rented it for us. Yeah, you rented it for us. So it's, a great well, it's movie. nice. It's nice that they're using that they're using Siri and Alexa for some good. I just get like Flo will say like Alexa say it was like some something off TikTok about a phrase in Dutch. And it'll be like, you're a cock, or whatever it is. You know that. <laughs> you know that. You know like, just, well, they just, well, it was on the new or the a program the other day, and they were telling you you can go into your Alexa privacy settings and see what commands you've asked. Yeah. Yeah, but even Crazy. when you're not there, and other people have asked it, so it's dangerous. Yeah, because someone found out they were they were they were cheating on because yeah. they were because it was like Alexa play some sexy music or something, and it was like yeah. ten o'clock in the I morning. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, oh, I forgot West Ham. Um, yeah, so we've got so we've got we've got Derby on Monday night. Unusual because we'll know who we're playing if we win, because the draw is happening on the one show on the Monday. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yep. one show with Jermaine, well, Jermaine Genus is pinning the balls, yeah, yeah. but fair enough, I imagine. But yeah, so we so we'll know who we're playing. Um, obviously, we play Pri- at Pride Park. Derby are hitting a, a, a fantastic run. It's going to be a really tough game, really tough game. We had uh, we had Adam on, uh, who's a Derby fan on, um, and he was like, basically, you know, they've out of a turbulent couple of seasons they've had or a few seasons at least they seem to be sort of getting getting their shit together a little bit now and as i said i think they've won the last five in the league and i think they're undefeated in something ridiculous as well something in double figures so yeah. it ain't gonna be easy um no. anyway what we what we do anton's and can it's done the, doing the preview and stuff but what we do in this show is we do the predicted 11 which is totally wrong and yeah <laughs> so we put yeah. our, our 11 and also we do your 11 the west Ham network community um as i said if you want to get involved we'll be doing it for the newcastle game and obviously obviously all the games so make sure you become a member uh, no not member a subscriber and uh we will post all that information and also while we're at it if you are a subscriber and you hit the bell notification that will notify you when your shows go live however yeah. I did do this notice this recently. I was like, why are my notifications not coming through? So I decided to click on the bell notification the other day and it gave me four options. Oh, hello. Something I didn't know before. And it gave me the option to click all shows, which mine oh. was not clicked on. So click so the bell and click, click the bell all shows. And then whatever the all shows are one. So if you, you want all shows. Also, while we have you here, the latest uh, podcast in the way West Ham uh boys is out so make sure you tune in on any way you want you listen to your podcast spotify apple whatever we'll get the boys on soon we'll be on there soon as well so check that out while we got you there um anyway done let's talk about the predicted 11 so big so now we you know, fourth round the last the last round it took us by surprise because we put out a week inside you and me but moisey went quite strong didn't he yeah which I surprised so. us all yeah, um Obviously, Derby is slightly different. Um, we know that from uh, the Moyes press conference, which John T then um, analysed for us afterwards, um, we know that Zuma's got some bump on his leg and it's and it, the swelling's there and, yeah, not looking good. Um, Ings is having, a, an in, having injections. He got injured 20 seconds into his West Ham debut. Um, <laughs> Skull Macca's having su- injections as well. He's got his third one on Wednesday, which is great because if it's shit, we haven't got a, stri- a second striker. So, and the transfer window closes on Tuesday, so that's clever uh, forefront. And um, Cornet's coming home, coming back to Rush Green on Monday. He's been in France for three weeks, so there we go. If there's any positives, if there's any light at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> it's the fact that we know all this before the window shuts. Um, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. But it's whether or not we go into the, 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 the thing. Anyway, listen, I think there's a bit of a misconception on the old... Uh, the old um, um, injections. I think maybe ten years ago, twelve years yeah. ago, you would have heard like I'm trying to think of a, like Andy Carroll or whatever getting an yeah. injection, and because he, he's hobbling and he gets the injection, it gets him ninety minutes in a game. Yeah, the, the, the world of medicine has totally moved on. Oh, and, totally, uh, yeah. I, yeah, and I, and I've been speaking actually to I've got a family member who's received them a couple of times, um, and you know it, it, it's it's not just designed to get you through that moment it's uh you know if it was just designed to get you through that moment then we wouldn't be knowing that skamak is no. going for this third round of them no, 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 no. um it, it's it's a it's a opportunity to help heal and it's uh I, I, i'm not that way designed but the it's, impression it's, i get from it is yeah. different to what it, we, we, it sounds it like it's like it, it's a way of injecting yeah <laughs> the medicine into the right place that's yeah. that, that's that's the way i <laughs> yeah if, if i was explaining it to flow that's how i think i'd explain it to like i think that's how i've see it because it's like particularly there's three courses in terms of like when you're ill you have medicine and you have to have it over a certain amount of that's, but it is it's very it is it's very different to what it used to be so yes you know easy easy i could write here now on twitter on facebook on our on our accounts and bloody hell too i mean it's a it's a it's, it's a funny conversation i'd have with my mate in the pub oh yeah. typical west Ham. we've got two main strikers getting our injections you yeah. know but it's not as bad as that it could be but it's not as bad it's not ideal that they're injured but the, 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 they're showing signs of being hopefully back well, I mean, sooner rather than later. So I mean, Scott, Mac, Scott Macca did his little back soon thing on, on Instagram, you know, and yeah. obviously when soon, we don't know, but... Yeah. And listen, if Corny is back and, and gets a, a run of training and doesn't break down in any way whatsoever, that'll be like a brand spanking new signing. 
He would be, yeah. And, he, yeah. and that, in time for Newcastle. Um, we need, just we need as, that, though. Yeah. Because obviously Newcastle will have their new signing, Anthony Gordon. Um, at least one new signing, if not two new signings with, with Ashby. Ashby. <laughs> if not three new signings with, with James Madison as well. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry, we've we've got we've got Danny Ings. Oh, we can't play. He'll be injured. Oh, don't worry. We got we got Louise Al and yep, yep. Looks the business. <laughs> he does. It looks quite good actually. Yeah, he does, yeah. But anyway, right. Okay. Anyway, let's get to eleven. Come ten on, minutes in. Ten minutes in. Yeah, ten minutes in. <laughs> we've ten minutes in. <laughs> but we don't do this very often. Just you uh, be having a good old chin, like talk nah. shit chin wag. So you know, and and it's and it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday, yeah. isn't it? We've got like you've got the roast on. You've got the papers. We got the football. We got Wrexham, uh, Wrexham, um, Sheffield United on BBC One. That'd be good. Yeah. Yep. Um, anyway, so let's let's start. Okay, let's start. Um, who's gonna be Who's gonna be in goal? And obviously, last time we were all surprised because Ariola was in goal. Then we found out he was injured. But by all accounts, he's not injured because he wants to leave to go to Lorient. Um, but he's not going to go to Lorient. Not. He doesn't want to go to Lorient. He ain't going to go to Lorient. Right. So who's gonna be in goal? Is he gonna? Is he now? Well, Obviously, we don't play Newcastle until, until the weekend. So he's going to do like he did against Brentford. And well, I suppose it was different with the Brentford game because Ariola wasn't was injured. Um, is it is it Ariola or is it Fabianski? I'd love to think that this was the start of the transition. I do honestly <laughs> believe, though, I do honestly believe that that will take place at some point in the coming month. I, I did say that, though, two months ago. But <laughs> I do believe the trans- I know, but it's got, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, to, to me, the keeper will be Ariola for the game, um, yeah. the game tomorrow. So, but I, I mean, we could. I, I mean, if Fabian, if Fabianski started tomorrow, then that means we could feel that we could be getting a nod towards Ariola starting. So, uh, yes, I think no, no, no. But I think Ariola will start. You, yeah. you, but but the point I was trying to make was, if it was Fabianski then that would be the closest nod we would get towards Ariola starting in the Premier League. But it will be Ariola. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't, yeah. I mean, the fact is Fabianski has been every league game in it. So it's like, when does that yeah. transition start? You know, like, I don't, yeah. if it will, you know, we don't know. You know, the, the fact is, we just don't know. You know, we all want it to happen. But as, as, as you said on your show um, the other yesterday, um, we had with, you know, Fabianski's, his end of his contract, but he's this season, but he's got a year option. We've got a year option, which we'll probably take anyway. Um, yeah. If David Moyes is still in charge by the end of summer, you don't know. We, we don't know, do we? We just don't know. We right. do not know. Are we going back three or back four? Uh, part of me thinks it's going to be a back three because I see, I, I, I know we don't have a huge choice to go on, mm. but I'm just thinking that that's kind of where I envisage um the Agerds, Ogbonna and maybe whatever future players that yeah currently with Moise is wanting to do is trying to investigate this world of the the three at the back. So um yeah I think th- I think he'll go with three at the back. I think for consistency's sake I think we will do. As I said, we've we we have not we've chopped and changed so much this year. And I think that's one of the problems as well is it's sort of like a good thing and a I can I can see, you know, because we were we were we were getting predictable with our 11 so if we did our 11s midway through last year we would know pretty much you and me would get it a hundred percent right yeah. the formation the players we're chopping and changing so much now it's like there's no consistency so the players don't necessarily know the role in terms of in the game obviously they can do it in training but it's different when it's a game situation you don't get that muscle memory type thing particularly if you're playing with the same i mean like we've, we've barely played with the same back four or back five inconsistent games in consecutive games i think once or twice this season we have um but that's it and that can't help anyone really um and so yeah i think it'll be a back three um but with newcastle in mind obviously and the fact that zuma's got his bump dorse is gone we don't have a choice russ we don't, we, yeah yeah exactly i don't but, think what, and that, that's the issue like it's like you, you think to yourself what, what's the priority obviously we need to stay in the league be nice yeah. to do a cup run but we don't actually physically have a choice um and we're left with recognized center backs Agerd and ogbonna you mm. could question whether or not kira is a recognized center back or right back um but i think it i think i think i think you might find that the three players i've just mentioned might be the three mm. 
I I think I think I think he'll. I've got a feeling he'll start Cress in the back three this week. Yeah. Yeah, because he hasn't. I mean, look, I, he's, I, I, he's, I, I, but I think not, if you start Cress, then you, you know you you yeah, relying just, on him just, with Emerson, and I think yeah. that was, I think that kind of screws that Emerson thing, and I think he's a. I think with. A, I think the big decision to rest Creswell or drop Creswell was a decision that he looks like he may. Like I would be really surprised if we saw Creswell start against Newcastle. Yes, unless so, unless forced. And but I don't necessarily believe that that means that he may start this game. This because because if you, it doesn't make for me it doesn't make sense to play Creswell and Emerson together. It might mm. do, but I just don't know if it does because. Where does where does yeah where does Kira fit in? Does Kira fit in? Does Johnson fit in? Where does Safal fit in? You know, well, there's I mean, there's I mean, think the fact is, you know, if if you went with Agued and Agbona, so okay, let's go with Agued and Agbona. That third role could be one of three. Well, it could be either Kira, it could be Ben Johnson. Sufal's played in that role as well in the back three. Yeah. Um, or you move everyone along one, and Cresswell plays there. So you have Chris, and, and I know it's the whole Chris for Emma, Emma, Emerson thing, but it's like needs must at the moment. So we haven't got many, we haven't got many fit centre backs, and so you know. So I think personally, I think it'll be, I think it'll be Cresswell, Ugbonna. I think it'll be quite. I, I think defensively, I think he will try and cotton wall again. But I, but then the flip, flip side is, it just contradicts exactly what I've said in terms of having some sort of settled side. Um, you know, it's a good opportunity to play a settled side. But then we're so threadbare I don't at the think, moment. I honestly don't think he will cut moon, mate. I don't think he, he, mm. he he's never he's not shown that recently that he's even got an intention to do that. Also in the um in the embargoed section section of the uh, press conference, he spoke yeah. about Kira as being a as a makeshift replacement and centre back. So that I don't know if that was a bit of a nod yeah, as well. Right to, 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 that that, yeah. that was it. That, you know, that was the kind of when he said that, when he mentioned Kira as centre back, I was a bit like, well, okay, I wonder if that's a and a nod to him. Um, I, I I don't think we've got. I literally I not not having one or sorry both of those two players that you've just put in there first mm. means that we would have Kira and Creswell alongside either Aguerd or Ogbonna, and I don't. I just don't see physically. Don't see Moyes doing that. I could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll go with that, Em. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. I think you're right. I think the fact is, the fact is, Kira, Kira has, you know, that's that's his role when he was at Schalke under Domenico Ted, Tedesco. He he played as a back, the back for three, as a right side of the back three. So, you know, that's probably his role that he's been playing. He has played there quite a bit of PSG as well. So, all right then. Okay, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a strong, it's a strong centre back pairing three, isn't it? To be honest. So, but. Let's go with that. Right, okay. So with that in mind, are we gonna go Emerson left wing back then? I think he I, I'm... or or following on from Tommy's show the other day, Ollie Scars. I'm throwing it out there. I'm gonna say no to Ollie Scars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, there it is. <laughs> not, not you're not saying that. Yeah, yeah. With with David Moyes in mind, not necessarily. Yeah, you're not yeah. saying no to Ollie Scars because we know he's a great player. Um, okay, yep. So, okay, so we'll go. We'll go with Emerson then. We'll go with yeah, Emerson. Yeah, I think. So. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think I, you know, I thought his performance last time out um, was decent, very like decent. Yeah, decent. And I yeah. think he needs that run of games. And it looks like he wants to investigate that world again with the the left wing back and the right wing back as such. Well, it does. And, it does seem that like that's that's the that's the sort of setup we're going to be looking at. You yeah. know, quite cons- you know, without mu- without much doubt, I think again, it's shoring up the back. It's making it, sh- you know, I mean, we kept a clean sheet, our first clean sheet since October uh, when we beat Bournemouth in the league. So um, yeah, so I think that's that's that would make sense. That would make sense. Okay, well, what about the right hand side now? Obviously, Soufal's made that sort of role his his own last couple of games, but obviously we have got Ben Johnson. Well, Ben Johnson featured, didn't he? He came off the bench as a sub, yeah, um, in the last game as well. So for me, I really want to see Ben Johnson back in the team. And I, mm. I listen, it's so it's so mad when you listen to different people, West Ham fans' opinions, how different people think about players. You know, I think I think the fan base is borderline split with Ben Johnson. Some love him, some hate him. Some think he's shit, and some think he's really good. Like, it's like, well, who's right? Yeah. Who's wrong? Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. But I, I, I think, I think, um, 
I think the difference between Ben Johnson and say someone like Harrison Ashby is that Ben Johnson's still in and around the team and still mm-hmm. featuring in some sort of way, um, where Harrison Ashby doesn't feature at all. So uh, people will want to see Ashby there, but it's oh not yeah, gonna that's not we know it's not going to happen. And yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, I mean, when he's changed his Twitter, he's changed his Twitter thing. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. little, little, little naughty, unbelievable. Little naughty. Yeah, well, it does still say he's a West Ham player. Yeah, um, but but he's changed his background. There you go. Yeah. Um, uh, or it could be like Moses, my old um, what's his face from from Brighton? He just puts in his transfer request via Instagram. That's yeah. that's the world we live in. It's now. Big speech. Yes, yeah, big speech, amazing. Right, okay, that's about five, goalkeeper. Okay, let's go with the midfield three, the midfield three, because that's sort of what we play, although we sort of move it about a little bit. It's sort of a three type thing, isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't think there's any doubts about it. I think Rice is going to play. Um, Moyes said in his press conference a couple of weeks ago that Rice is knocking on his door every week saying, no, play me, I want to play. doesn't matter, I want to play. Play me, play me, play yeah. me, play me, play me. So um, I, think, I think he will start. Um, I don't know. Like, what, what would he play Paqueta in this game, League One opposition? You know, See, is, is, yeah. it, is it is it is it too much of a? It's not a gamble to play Paqueta, but you really do. Can we afford not to play him? It's not that I'm saying Paqueta is better than Rice. I'm saying that Paqueta is a different player to Rice, and I think I want to save anything he's got in the tank for Premier League. I could be completely. It, it's. It's. I mean, it's, it, it's. It's again. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Really. I think. You know, for con, for consistency's sake and momentum's sake, you'd want as as many of the players who you know who are likely to play for in new, the Newcastle game to be playing this game, where they have time to get some minutes under their belts before it's the Premier League, where it kind of matters. Whereas mm-hmm. you know the, the league, the FA Cup, rather, isn't necessarily. Our, it's third in our priorities. It's Premier League, Conference, then the FA Cup. I think. Yeah. In all honesty, yeah. so it may be. But, but as you said, you know, we're playing. We're, we're playing a, a young, very young, dynamic side in terms of derby. Um, you know, some good young players as well. A couple of old players like David McGoldrick and stuff. But some, you know, Max Bird's a re- very much Declan Rice type player. You know, sort of he's a captain. He's he's the he's a young captain. It's midfield. You know, could be a good, good guy to keep an eye on for West Ham. I think as a as one for the future. Um, I think I think I, I think this is a game for young Flynn. Well, yeah. So I think on paper you'd want to see the most ideal thing really for us, or, or the, the the midfield trio we'd want to see the most as a yeah. mixture of um, Rice, Paqueta, and Fornals or Downs. So. I, I, but but this game, I think it will be Flynn Downs and Tommy Suchek. Oh, okay, 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 so, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, because I think oh. I think his decision not to play Suchek and then bring him on against Everton was the right decision. And I think Tommy Suchek, you know this this. Not I'm saying that you have to keep him happy. I don't I don't mean it like that. But God, man, I mean. On paper, he can be quite impactful, and if he's playing a bit further yeah. forward that he has been doing, he does he does win a lot of headers. He does cause a lot of problems mm. um, up there, and 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 that will cause their any team problems. As much as people have not rated Suchek this season, when he plays to the best of his ability, then he can cause people problems, and he can be effective yeah. in the air and all that sort of stuff. Well, no so it's a good, there, yeah, yeah, it's a good chance to see Suchek Rice and Downs perform. Moyes might go for Paqueta, might go for Fornals. Mm. I think Fornals still could be in the team. It's just, um, it's just where. So, what do you mm. think? Uh, well, I, yeah. Again, I'm I'm caught caught between a rock and a hard place. I think. I think for me, I, I to be honest, I'd I'd like to give them as much cotton wool as possible. To be fair, so I would even probably go with a, a what I would call our conference midfield rather than necessarily it's obviously not kind of commentary but i'd probably even go like downs lanzini four nows you know just i know it's totally like it'd be a total you know different so different midfield but for me it's just a bit more cuppy do you know what no but we don't know man. But, but do you know what though in, in terms of lanzini like it could be a good game 
it could be a good game to reintroduce him to, not just because it's against lower league opposition, but the FA Cup, he knows the score, he's been there, done that, wore the T-shirt, and mm. we've got a big run-in, so we're going to rely heavily on the on the team. And, and Lanzini can, every season, pick up form. We've seen yeah. it every single season in a West Ham shirt. Mm. Every single season, whether he's had a very good season or a very bang average season, but every single season in a West Ham shirt, when, when, not just when West Ham fans have doubted him, when he's probably doubted himself, he's stepped up and given us a run of games where he's performed at the highest level. Mm. So maybe this could be a very good game to put Lanzini in and give him a run and just think, do you know what? We need everyone firing on all cylinders. So go out there, do the yeah. job you need to do. So you could be yeah. right. Yeah, you could be could right. Be. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're still playing one game weeks, really. I know I know we're playing on a Monday, Saturday, but still, we're playing one game weeks at the moment. Oh, it's it? only so, five, six weeks till that changes. I know. So it's, uh, you know, so... It, you know, I think there's, it's, I mean, we, we it's, we'll we go with, let's go with our strongest. I think we'll go with those three and, and yeah. we'll see. We'll, we're probably always wrong, but the matter. Um, right, let's go with the uh, front two. So, Scott Macker and Danny Ings, yep, yeah? good. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting, right. though. This is, is interesting, interesting because, because uh, yeah, um, I, 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 I'm not, listen, let's go straight up to the top. Because yeah. I think I think it's the other player that's going to be difficult. So I personally think it will be Antonio. I would I love nothing so. more to see than Mubama start the game. I think he's firing all cylinders. Fourteen goals in eleven games, mm-hmm. but in actual that since he made his debut in the Europa Conference League. Yeah. However, I awarded him the fifteenth goal in eleven games or twelve games because he, he deserved that goal. Yeah. Um, but I think we will see him. I just don't think he will start. I think it will be Antonio that will start and lead the line for West Ham. And it's just who's going to support him, but you know. See, I see. I I think this. I think this is the one to give Bowen a rest. Personally, I mean, I mean, the the obvious thing is to go with Antonio and Bowen, and that's. But as as Moyes has, has been saying, it's Antonio and Bowen are sort of already two strikers, so I don't think he'll risk both of them from the start. It's funny I you see that. Go on, you think he's going to risk both of them? Don't uh, you? No, no, I don't think he will. I think he'll play both of them. <laughs> yeah. But, but but Bowen, he's he, he's consistently said again, like Bowen's fit enough, you know. He, he the the key thing, right, that Moyes has said when he, we were successful, and said when we were not being successful was, we either have consistency or lack consistency, yeah. and he will want to continue that winning feeling no matter who the hell he plays. It doesn't matter. It, it, it and 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 I don't think. I th- to fans, they might be like, "Why the hell are you risking someone like Jared Bowen, Declan Rice?" But it doesn't matter. There's always going to be a mix of first team players in there, and, and you know, if you don't play Bowen, then you've still got a Gerd, and you've still got Rice, and you've still got you know big players in the team that could be affected. So, you know, there's an element of what Moyes will want, which would be get the job done. Bowen's, you know, picked up a little bit of form. He's looking all right. You're right. He's, yeah. He, he played the friendlies. He, he scored mm. goals in the friendlies. He's, he's you know, he scored the brace at the weekend. That was it was a good brace as well. He was effective. He he was doing everything we want him to do, cut inside, getting into the box. And actually I quite enjoyed watching Bowen and Antonio perform together because they switched a couple of times and they did, yeah, Bowen yeah. went through the middle and Antonio went out in the right. And this could be a good game again to test that theory. Well that's that's the thing. But, I mean you you're totally right. I mean the fact is they'll be t- they'll be they'll be the starting two for the Newcastle game. Unless we unless we buy a striker, <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. Um, but they that they will be the two for for the Newcastle game. Maybe not for the the game afterwards, but for the Newcastle games. So actually, it's it's another ninety minutes up the belt, in their belt rather under their belt, whatever it is. Um, where they can do this sort of as you said, sort of move moving, not necessarily a false nine, but it's like they're interchangeable, aren't they? Those two positions and yeah. maybe yeah, and it, and it could be you're right. Go, I mean, you know, go strong. Maybe kill the maybe kill the game off after sixty minutes yeah. and take them all off. Um, the, the amount of times we've se- said that though, as fans, and it's never <laughs> it happened. Uh, yeah, but 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 the the but is though, like the the key thing for me is consistency. Yeah. I know it bores people to hear it, but it's true. Like that's where we got the best form over the last season, two seasons. I don't care when people say like the form has been shit since January because. I wavered that because we got to semi final of the Europa yeah, League, so yeah, I wavered yeah. the Premier League form. But obviously, it's not good now, and it's and it's continued. And um, we've not, and you know, all that sort of stuff. But for me, you know, it'll, I think he'll go reasonably strong. I don't think there'll be any youth included. I think they'll be on the bench. I think you will see them 
I don't have a doubt in my mind that you'll put Mabama on and play him. And I think he may come on a little bit earlier than what we would first anticipate. Um, I just like the show that Tommy did the other night about the young players and is the is the youth system defunct and is it gone? It's not. It's just very different to what it used to be, and it's worth every club. It's the same in the. It's the same. I'm going to say in the world. It's not in the world. It's the Premier League as such as as, as mainly the, yeah. the issue because of the money, and loads of clubs are the same. I I, I went on the show with Tommy and, and Gatesy and and Luke, and I said that you know, out of all the players that we've recently got rid of, there's only a few of them I've been really quite personally gutted about. Mm. I was I wasn't I wasn't actually gutted about Equa. But yeah, you know, no, but it, it's 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 where where they are now. Do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. we always, as you said, I know Elise was 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 one of your one of your boys, and obviously Ashby sort of one of my boys, really. Um, but it's, and I know I know what you mean. It's sort of one of those things where it will it will hurt, but then you know, and and when we and we said it the other day, didn't we? We said you know we we looked at. I mean, I've I've looked because I looked at the ninety nine winning FA Cup youth, which was, you know, the golden the golden age, the golden age of West Ham youth football. We won the FA Cup, you know, well, you know the youth cup we beat, you know, a Chris Kirkland in goal, you know, Coventry nine <laughs> nil in aggregate. Out of that team, four players have uh, like made made West Ham first team. Yeah, yeah. Carrick, Joe Cole, Stephen Bywater, and Richie Garcia. You may you played twenty times for the club, and then obviously then dropped divisions. But then the rest of them, Ter, you got Terrell, Terrell Forbes, you got Bertie. We've had most of these other channel actually. Adam Newton, we've had Izzy Ikipen, we've had uh, Anwar Udin, Lewis Riddle. You know, we had um, Angus, we had um, Michael, and actually none of them actually played first team football at West Ham. Yeah, but and I've always kind of, I've kind of always, I've under, I, I think to be honest, I've understood that. Yeah. For a long time, even as a even as a kid, like you know, seeing the Joe Coles and the Michael Carrots and all that sort of stuff coming through, you've always understood that it, it was just always a keen interest. Like it was always a big thing for me. Like if I lived close to the stadium, I know for a fact I would be at the the young games because I've I've got I love it. I love it. I go and see my nephew yeah. play now. You know, I, I, I do enjoy it because it's always about trying to spot that player and think, God, we save ourselves ninety million quid because we've got this talent. Um, yeah. Declan Rice wasn't. You know, he was 14, he got released from Chelsea and we picked him up, put our arm around him and, and put him, catapulted him to where he's got to be. So um, th- there was a diamond in the rough that we found and, and progressed through the ranks. Um, in terms of things like Equa, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily, you know, I, I, I was actually really unimpressed with him in the friendlies during the World Cup. It's a friendly, yes, I get it. But I know, and he scored a goal in one of the games, but I was really unimpressed with 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 his performance. And I've witnessed him a couple of times training. He was a big unit of a lad, and he kind of dominated sometimes in the midfield when in the training sessions. But putting that out, and and the thing is, Russ, with players like Equa and Okoflex, and I know you're a big fan of Okoflex, but the difference between them and the younger players in the team who have been with West Ham a lot longer is they don't really owe anything to West Ham. So no, you're right. Okoflex you're has right. come back from Swansea. And if he doesn't get a look in over the next six months, he will be gone in the summer. So I don't have any doubts that Okaflex will be gone in the summer if he doesn't get a little bit of a of a shoe in because of his age. Equa was thinking the same. You know, I've came to this club, I'm not getting a shot. It's players like Alessi. He's the one really in modern the modern time. If we let Ashby go, I'll feel the same about Ashby. But mm. Alessi is the one that I think we not live to regret, but I think he'll go on and make a really good career for himself. Yeah, yeah. Not, not think, just at the, not just in the championship. He'll go. He'll be in the Premier League at some point. He will. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sunderland would play. He might, he might be it with Sunderland. They're doing very well, though. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, you look at as you said, we look at someone like Josh, who, who, who I know. We, I remember when we we spoke to Potsy, he was he was the one he was gutted uh, for, um, because he knew he was like the the, the best kid for training and he was West Ham mad and you know it just didn't work work out for him you know and and so he, he then had to go to Anderlecht and obviously build his rebuild build his career then goes then obviously company goes to Burnley goes to Burnley so he will be he will get his chance to play in the Premier League which would be brilliant for him and you know he'll get a fantastic you know applause when he comes because he's a West Ham boy you know but you look at the and actually Potsy spoke quite candidly about Reese Oxford where he was the next one, you know, in that Arsenal game where we had Ozu in his pocket. But it's now, we we only see what's on the pitch. And that, that's the way I, I think, you know, a lot of these 
things that happen behind closed doors and why is this person gone and why has he gone to Leeds and why is this guy going to Newcastle? We only see what's what's on the pitch. Yeah. Um, agents, families, as agents, you know, they're demanding all this silly money for players who have just made, I mean, the Sonny Perkins thing, you know, he, he wanted almost first team wages really and he just made like one you know one two appearances off the bench really so it was like no because actually you shouldn't be demanding that yet you know you haven't earned your stripes to demand that yet listen and yeah so, i know i know but i think there's a, there's an argument to two sides isn't there you know and yeah. i know this is slightly dissecting slightly but the, 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 the argument on both sides of it is that you know you could just throw a couple of these youngsters in and give True, them try and yeah. get and try and give them a run of games and if they got mm. the run of games and they perform well for you and, and then you found a couple of diamonds mm. excellent but yeah. um equally though the, the, the other foot is the situation is you know we're not really giving these players a chance so you like tommy said like why would anyone want to come to West Ham mm. if you're not going to get that pathway? But then the other argument is, look at all the other clubs and what pathway are these players getting? Like, how many players have Man United let go and Chelsea let go and Man City let go and, and Arsenal let go? You know, we signed, you know, Arsenal let go of Okoflex. Yeah. Um, Equa let go of, Chelsea let go of Equa, let go of Declan Rice, you know, let go of many, many more players. So it's... It, it happens. It does it's happen everywhere. Right. It's just that yeah. we love and breathe and love the club we, we do. Yeah, and 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 I, and I guarantee there's you know there's there's probably people on I don't know Aston not Aston Villa but you know so another fan channel from another con- another club doing exactly the same thing about one of their youth team yeah. players are leaving. And you know as you said we he said we've you know we talk about Declan Rice the one that got away for for Chelsea really yeah. and 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 you know in the same way you look at. I mean, as you as you as you alluded to, I did. I've done some stats. I've done some stats. I've gone through. This is the Premier League. So every this is this season's Premier League, and I've gone through. And you can see, look, painstakingly gone through every player that's played in the Premier League who is an academy player. So has been in the in the youth setup at that club. I've taken out Zaha because he left and came back. So that was my thought. Thing. And. This is how many games. So they, there's only 55 players in the whole Premier League who have played a game this week. And that could be a sub appearance, could be a five minute sub appearance, Sunny Perkins type thing or whatever. Only for, and you know, you've got 44 of them have, have made more than five. So have been so, because that's what we were saying the other day. It's not necessarily about the players. It's not, you know, because if we looked at, you know, you, yeah, Moyes has given more academy players first team debuts than any other manager since the early 90s. But they've been in 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 pointless games. It's not. It's, it's how they transition into the Premier League. Yeah. But where my argument, where my argument lies in this whole situation is that when you you think you, like when someone deserves a chance and there's an opening and they don't get it when there's an yeah. opening, that's what pisses me off more than anything. So you think back to Chelsea Arsenal last year, injuries, sending offs, Alessi's there, he's a, a, the under twenty ones captain, Alessi wasn't let go. Unless he chose to leave the club, so there was a difference between getting let go and or choosing to leave the club and and all that sort of stuff. You know that that there's a big big difference between that. Will Greenidge was let go. Yeah, but the thing with Will was what's name's the under twenty three was the ex- the commentary manager is the commentary the culture manager is it's the former under twenty three coach. Yeah, so he knows so, of him, but yeah, so yeah, he's, 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 he's obviously a, he's a talented two, so. lad, but yeah, he's, and he's obviously a talented lad. I'm not yeah. slagging away, slagging him off for that, but. It's just when an opportunity arises, it's like we're struggling with strikers and you've got a player like Mubama who's yeah. fluctuating between the ages, 18, 21, banging in the goals, confidence flying high. He doesn't remind me of Freddie Sears. He doesn't remind me of Mipo Obadiku. But that's Obadiku. the thing, the, me, the Mipo argument, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's, he, they did it. He, and I try, every, every, I know everyone is different. I totally agree that. But as you said, with Mipo, he came on and he came straight off, you know, and it's like, and it's like, you know, and that, that is completely shunting his development because of that. Mm-hmm. And so I so and the thing is, like, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I think it's it'd be great to play more of the more of the first team, more more of the the kids in the, in the first team. I mean, as you said, the under 18s have just lost their first game this season um, to Southampton. Kevin Keane out. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> or in for manager. Yeah, we, yeah, get him out. He's get him out. He lost the game. Out the 18s but, and then the first team. 
but but you know he, no, he he's never won a he, he's tried three <laughs> times he's never won a game for us in the in the first team. Um, so but but it's it you know it, it and and and, it's, and I think someone said it in the chat I think uh, for the Tommy's one it there's a balancing act because at the end of the day you know we we want to see players did we we want to see boys playing us in in the West Ham side but that's what we want but it's like is it the detriment of we get relegated because we're playing the you know it's it's diff, it's I totally see. Yeah, I, you know, I totally, and, and we want to see more. And I think, you know, you think of the situation now. If we don't get anyone in January in, in this January transfer window as another striker, you think surely we would move Divine into that third position after Bowen, but he won't. But you know, he won't th- because th- he th- said th- that think, he hasn't said anything about it. Well, I, th- I think, I think the way people think is that if God forbid Antonio gets injured, we still won't see Mubama start. That's what pisses people off. Yeah. Yeah. That's what pisses people off because it's like, well, you're now going to play a makeshift striker whilst you've got a youth player banging in the goals. Now, you go to AC Milan, Inter Milan, totally. you go to Ajax, you go to Borussia Dortmund and they're in the same situation. They will play that young player. They will. Mm. They will. Even if they don't think. And, and Russ, we've had Tony Carr on. We've had all those young players come on and Tony Carr himself said, you know, about Glenn Johnson, like, nah. And then look what happened to Glenn Johnson. He got, yeah. he got Glenn Rhoda wanted him. He was like, "Nah, he's not ready." Well, we need to fucking play him because we've got no one else. And he played him, and and look at his career. I know? wonder if it's, I wonder if it's, but I, I think you know, and and I know we give a DVA, but this is, I think it's a really really interesting topic. And I, I think the trouble is, I think we, I think it, we've, it's not. I don't think it's inherently a West Ham problem. I think it's a Premier League problem. And as you said, the, the the culture in Spain. I mean, look at Spain. Look, you know, look at Barcelona. Look at Fatu. He's seventeen. He was seventeen when he came into the side. You know, they got all these. You know, they 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 have no problem putting a six. You know, Barcelona. They have no problem putting a sixteen, seventeen year old in the squad, in the side, playing consistently well. But and, you know why they're doing it, Russ, as well. And it's a famous comment that people say. It's it's these countries and these teams are are staying ahead of the curve, so they yeah. are willing to play and not get results and maybe not qualify for a tournament to think in the future. Um, mm. And, and, look at, and, look and at probably, and probably though, Spain and Italy, probably in the next World Cup should have had four years of experience with 17, yeah. 18, 19, 20 year old that, boys playing at the top level. That's what I said. Was it Germany when it was like, when it was, I think it was 2016 or it might have been even the 2020 World Cup when they deliberately didn't play when they played like a very youthful side, knowing they weren't going to qualify, do particularly well. They did all right, but they weren't they, in the fact that they saw a four-year plan for it. Yeah. And that's fine if you say it's a four-year plan. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, people look at, people say, oh, you know, I, I, was, I was having this discussion with someone the other day. He's a Chelsea fan. He goes, oh, yeah, we got, you know, we got loads of youth players. The only reason you got loads of youth players is because you couldn't buy anyone for a year. And so Lampard had to play all the youth team players. So he gave, it's not like he gave them a chance. They had to play because we yeah. had no other, no other choice. And yeah, they had, I mean, they've got seven, seven, like, players have uh, are, are academy players who have played more than five games in the Premier League this season um but even that you know it's now they can buy players you know Gallagher's not getting much of a look in now Mount is is you know the crowd of you know a lot of the crowd don't like Mount anymore now they think he's he's sort of like he's, he's there for ceremonial sake you know so actually Reese James is injured so they can go out and buy the the guy from um Dynamo uh Kiev they can go out for for a Ninety odd million, they can go buy someone else. Whether they could probably go and buy Casado if if Arsenal don't buy him, it, it's that's it, that's how it's moved. It's not like because they've got a great academy because they had to play anyone. Fulham, Fulham have got no one in their squad who have played more than five games who's in their academy now. Yeah. Same as uh, same obviously Brentford haven't got an academy. You know, uh, someone like Leeds. You always see Leeds is quite a youthful side bringing their kids through. I think it's only one player is is made more than five appearances for them so it's like mm. it's not like them and us it's like us as a general thing i think the average is like the average is like apart from he took chelsea i think the average is like two have made yeah. more than five appearances so and that's what we are we're two ben johnson ben johnson yeah. and uh and declan rice and obviously obviously um in um divine had a a brief cameo in yeah. the premier league this year as well but anyway He's not going to play. Say, he's not going to play. <laughs> yeah. To, to summarise, I don't think he's going to play on, on Monday, unfortunately, yeah. which would be a yeah. shame. Yeah, it'll be a shame. Will be. Anyway. Will be. 
rant over. Um, as I said, we give you, the guys, the West Ham Network community, opportunity to pick your 11. Um, we'll pl- let's play it now and see how similar ours is to yours. There you go. There you go. So it's a similar, I mean, back three, but they, I think they've gone for more, definitely more uh, cup squad rather than necessarily first teamers. A few, a few in there, a few similarities, you know, goalkeepers and things, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, there's a vibe. 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 As I said, we'll have all the, uh, all the stuff, all the uh, watch along and, all the reviews and the ratings and everything else of the Derby game coming up uh, as well. But uh, yeah, Wendell Deadline Day is coming up as well. Woo. It's coming up to coming up on uh, on Tuesday. So yeah, we'll have a few special guests on the live stream as we always do. Um, so you have to watch it, and and uh, we don't even know it's going to turn up. So that's exciting, you know. <laughs> It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be quite, yes come join us please do and obviously subscribe to the channel as anton says hit the bell button click it there's four options hit the option that you want to hit let me just double check while we're on that's what i'll yeah. do that's you what check. i'll do your channel then i click the subscribe yeah there's 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 four options as i'm doing it now it says notifications all personalized none or unsubscribe I, I was on, I think I must have been on personalised and didn't realise it. I went in and I clicked all yesterday. And there you go. And there you go. So make sure you click all. Um, and uh, if you want to become a mem- uh, channel member, hit the join button down there and we can you can support the channel that way. Yeah, you can subscribe, you can like, you can put a cheeky comment, positive, positive or negative. We read them all and appreciate you, uh, even if it's slagging us off, because you've taken time out to slag us off, really. So in it so fair play uh everyone's entitled to their opinions let us know in the comments what your 11 would be what your starting 11 would be uh and don't say you know i'll put brookin and bonds in because <laughs> that's what i always say that brookin bonds and yeah cotty and macabre yes. up front of you every time every time but anyway so for myself and for mr baker i well, know before care. you go though russ what's your prediction what's your prediction replay 2-1 Two West Ham. I'm going to say replay. Just got a feeling. Just got a feeling. Anyway, uh, as I said, if you uh, are walking the dog and you want to listen to a podcast, check out the We Are West Ham podcast. Uh, new latest edition out now. It'll be out next week as well. One every week. Anyway, so myself and for Mr. Baker, take care. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay humble. Keep the faith. Come, you wines. Mm-hmm.